Hello, folks, and welcome to the end of our trip through Canada. We had a monster box of Canadian offerings, and um, this here, the Canadian Snow Falcon for 2016, closes out the series on Canada. And uh, as you can see, I probably hit the Snow Falcons harder than anything else. Um, I'm pretty sure there's like 100 Canadian Snow Falcons, and I think they're actually more than that. Um, but in any case, um, I got these on a random year deal from Atmex. So they're random year. I had no idea what I was going to get. But again, they were like probably at the time, I think probably $26 even. Um, and the spot price again was in the 14. So, you know, I had the ability to make a move on them. So I did. Um, they weren't my favorite to start with. But now if you look at some of the websites where they're selling these Snowhawks, they, uh, Snow Falcons, sorry, they are fetching a higher premium than even some of the uh, polar bears. Uh, not as high as the grizzly. The grizzly is the king of the hill. But uh, these uh, snow falcons, they do very well and stuff. You know, guys, um, you may have noticed, but I really like RCM products, Royal Canadian Mint products. I just do. Seems like they put a lot of effort into their precious metals. And why are they doing that? Why is anybody doing it? I always ask that question. But what I will say is that um, I have made a conscious choice to push as hard and as fast and as far as I can uh, with precious metals, particularly silver, because I think that no matter what happens in terms of the economy, in terms of geopolitical stress, we're watching right now CNN and some of the news uh, agencies running a 24-7 news cycle about Iran, to see what the outcome is going to be on this portfolio, this precious metals portfolio, this bullion bank that I'm trying to build for me and the ones closest in my life uh, for us to enjoy down the road. I know it sounds like a fool's charity uh, game, but it's not. It has a very unique purpose, and it's going to be made evident as precious metals start to just really, really run the roost. Um, you're going to start hearing about them every day here, probably this year. You know, the more geopolitical things that you know go wrong, the more economic things go wrong, the more news, agency, news agencies, I'm sorry, it's getting hard for me to talk now, and um, governments are going to have to start to um, have credibility in what they've been saying. And they're going to have to start to have credibility in how they're going to deal with the debt, how they're going to deal with all the inflation that's going to be coming through the system. There is a truckload of dollars and yen and yuan and pesos and rubles and you know uh, uh, rupees. All these different currencies are being printed to the moon by every central bank on earth. Do not be fooled. Even the SDR, which is Jim Rickard's uh, favorite uh, currency, the strategic drawing right, is being printed to the moon by the International Monetary Fund right now, getting ready to try to be the next reserve currency on earth to absorb some of the debt. Not going to happen. It might have, you know, a, a, a bit of a try at it for a bit, but it's going to fall flat just like the rest of the paper currencies. When that happens, we're going to be going back to these coins. Cryptocurrencies, for example. Notice how they... Fix the language in cryptocurrencies. You have Bitcoin, Litecoin, and, you know, Ethereum. That sounds a little different. But you get your Bitcoin from mining it off the web, or you can buy it off an exchange. But you have to uh, take your Bitcoin that had been mined and put it in a wallet. See, they give all of these physical terms to things like cryptocurrencies to try to make you feel as if you're connected to the physical world. And really, it's not. It's all electronic. It's all you know, they're in the ether, and it's all susceptible to any kind of security uh, risk that um, exists in that world. This here has a security risk, but it's of a more physical nature. As long as you have the ability and desire to accumulate, um, you can. You got to have some income to do it too. But that same ability and desire to accumulate can be applied to securitizing this very precious investment, this very precious metal. You want to try to get what you can. You want to educate yourself as much as you can. Listen to the guys out there, you know, the stackers and the financial gurus, you know, some of the government officials that actually know what they're talking about, some of the old uh, reserve, uh, uh, reserve bank chairmen. Um, they, once they leave their institutions, they are more forthcoming with the truth about what they've been doing and what's going on in the system. Alan Greenspan, he'll tell you straight up now, gold and silver is the way to go, whereas before he was all about the dollar. Anyway, kind of long on this one, but we are finishing up with the box of Canadian coins, and we're going to probably head into the week 
looking at some other international offerings, but Canada is out <laughs> and everybody else is in. I have all the Canada I want and need, maybe some more 10 ounce bars. But until then, until I get some more money, <laughs> I'm going to be happy with what I got. <laughs> all right, guys, thank you so much for joining the Silver 5150 channel. If you haven't subscribed and you want to subscribe, please do. If you didn't like what you heard, thank you for listening as long as you did. Um, any comments you want to make, that'd be great. Thumbs up is always great. But like I said, this, more importantly, is for the people that will come along later and are looking for a body of work and information that is of their interest coming into precious metals and can help them in the pursuit of precious metals. So thank you all for participating. Thank you all for watching. And we'll catch you in the next show. Take care.